Headlines for this week include immigration attorney Benjamin Curtin is coming to campus. UWL professor Bob Hoar is named top innovator and some fun fall time events for you and your friends to enjoy. Stay tuned. WMCM's Week in Review is next. Thanks for watching WMCM's Week in View. I'm Zach Hansen. And I'm Ingstrand, Aaron Ingstrand. Milwaukee attorney Benjamin Curtin will be visiting UWL's campus next week to speak about immigration reform and compliance. Curtin, who has 12 years experience with immigration law, will help explain the new immigration reform and discuss what changes employers should be paying attention to and the insight involved with having an immigration compliance strategy. The event takes place at noon Friday, November 8th in the Streiselic Great Hall located at the Cleary Alumni and Friends Center. Admission is free and a reception is planned directly after the seminar with Benjamin Curtin. If you would like to receive materials about the topic, RSVP with your email address by November 6th at 608-785-8783 or at sbdc at uwlax.edu. Associate Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs and UW Lacrosse Mathematic Professor Bob Hoar was named top innovator in digital education. Hoar played a main factor for the university's Math Massive Open Online course, also otherwise known as the MOOC. It also won a national award in 2013 for the Desire to Excel Award for individuals, groups, and organizations that display ingenuity, creativity, and collaboration in guiding students to achieve highly in college. For more information on Bob Hoare's achievements, visit the UW Lacrosse website at www.uwlex.edu. Now here's Stephanie Haw to tell us about what's coming up on campus. Thanks, Zach. If you like laser shows and rock music, there is an event just for you. On Friday, November 1st, the UWL Planetarium and Physics Department will be hosting Album Encounters, a multimedia light and laser show. The show will feature music from the popular rock band Nine Inch Nails. Admission is $5. The show starts at 8 in the evening on campus at the UWL Planetarium. For more information, you may contact Bob Allen at allen.robe at uwlax.edu or at 785-8669. Also happening on Friday, November 1st, CAB, along with the Leadership and Involvement Center, will be bringing UWL students experience that allows them to follow the journey of food insecurity and the serious implications that hunger possesses in America. The movie will be a place, a place at the table. The movie will be shown in Centennial Hall, room 1309. Admission is free. For more, informa more information can be found at www.facebook.com slash UWLCAP. Movie times are 6 and 9 p.m. On Saturday, November 2nd, the UWL Planetarium will be hosting a pub public planetarium program. The program is titled Cosmic Castaways. Admission is $5.00 for adults and $3 for students, children, and senior citizens. For more information, you may contact Bob Allen at allen.robe at uwlax.edu. Now back to you, Zach. Thanks, Stephanie. This week, WMCM set out Jenna Moran and Haley Doherty to learn about an exciting event that is being put on on UWL's campus activities boards. Let's take a look at what they found. November 6th at 7.30 p.m., Campus Activities Board will be hosting Soledad O'Brien as part of their Distinguished Lecture Series. Soledad O'Brien is an award-winning journalist, documentarian, news anchor, and producer. In June 2013, she launched Starfish Media Group, 
a multi-platform media production and distribution company dedicated to uncovering and producing empowering stories that take a challenging look at the often divisive issues of race, class, wealth, poverty, and opportunity through personal stories. Year, and we thought that Soledad was a perfect opportunity to bring to campus to talk to our students about her journalism career, career including her work as CEO with the Starfish Media Group, Al Jazeera, and then also working with HBO and formerly CNN. O'Brien's critically acclaimed documentary series, Black in America, and its follow-up, Latino in America, are among CNN's most successful domestic and international franchises. In 2013, O'Brien joined Harvard University as a distinguished fellow and was appointed to the board of directors of the Foundation for the National Archives. You can buy your tickets from the card info counter. Student tickets are $4 and general public tickets are $10. On the day of show, they will be going up $2. Student tickets will then be 6 and general public will be 12 For WMCM, this has been Haley Doherty and Jenna Moran. If you haven't purchased your ticket for this event yet, you can do so in advance by calling 608-785-8898. This weekend marks the beginning of November, and what better way to start the month than with music? UWL's own Screamin' Eagles marching band will be holding their annual review concert this weekend. The review is set to showcase all the musical performances that the band has performed overall this year, along with some dance routines and crowd pleasers. The Screaming Eagles Marching Band Review Concert will be held Sunday, November 3rd in Mitchell Hall at 1.30 in the afternoon and is free to the public. As a former Screaming Eagle myself, I can honestly say it's a great time for people of all ages and thoroughly entertaining. To learn more about the marching band, visit their website at www.uwlax.com slash SEMB. The Cooley Region Humane Society has many pets in need of loving homes. Here's some of the animals available in this week's edition of Perfect Pets. Meet Jasper, the friendly dog. He's a two-year-old pit bull that is very silly and is great with kids. Here's Lancelot. He's an energetic three-month-old kitty who's on a quest for a new family. Meet Cletus. He's a one-year-old Dachshund mix, proving that though he's pint-sized, he provides gallons of fun. And meet Molly. She's an eight-week-old kitty that likes to keep it silly and is full of love. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Again, the phone number for the Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014. Stop your searching because the 2013 Eagle Eye Medallion has been found. UWL senior Nicole Bottleson found the medallion in a pine tree on the west side of Reuter Hall. Bottleson is a psychology and pre-physician assistant major and was not very familiar with the history of UWL's campus, but she researched the history through the university's website and also from Google. Bottleson won a bountiful amount of prizes, including a $50 gift card to the university bookstore, a, bookstore, a $50 gift certificate, university dining, and a lifetime membership to the UWL Alumni Association. Congratulations, Nicole, on your accomplishment. Do you have too much food or just like to help out a good cause? Well, good news. For the fifth year in a row, a group of students from the College of Business Administration are holding a food drive. Donations benefit the UWL Food Pantry and the La Crosse Hunger Task Force. The food drive is two weeks long all throughout campus. The food drive started on October 28th, but you can still drop off any items or money donations until the November 8th deadline. If you can't make it to campus but still want to donate, Two alternate donation sites can be found on November 18th at the People's Food Court in the afternoon and Howe's Diamond Jewelers in the evening. In recognition of the Halloween season, we sent out WMCM's Exploring Lacrosse crew to check out some of the spooky attractions in our area.
This week for Exploring the Cross, John and I are out here at Clearwater Farm located on Alaska for the 32nd annual Screaming for a Reason Haunted House. And I'm freaking out. John, how are you doing? I'm doing great, but I don't understand why you're freaking out. I mean, this is for such a great cause. Are you afraid of the monsters or something? Uh, yeah. I mean, come on, it's only $10. And if you bring two non-perishable food items, it's only $8. You couldn't ask for anything better than that. Um, yeah, well, there is still, I just don't want to go in, John. Don't make me go in, please. Well, you know what, before me we go in, how about we take a look around and see how this place is set up? All right, cool, let's go. The house is hosted by the Onalaska Joyces, which is a nonprofit volunteer organization that raises money to give back to the community. You know, we raise money by scaring people, which is, you know, enter at your own risk type deal. So it's a lot of, a lot of fun and unique opportunity for people to volunteer and actually grow as a person. <laughs> Shed of the Dead is one of the scariest Halloween attractions in the La Crosse area. We don't, we don't try to be dramatic and tell you ghost stories. We don't try to, you know, scare you with certain things. We basically just, it's like an old school haunt with real actors swinging machetes at your head. Each volunteer enjoys something different about the house and that's why many return each year. Yes. Scaring people, the same people's fear. Each year, the JCs have a different setup for the haunted house. Um, every room, is, the outside area right now is basically a zombie apocalypse camp. And then when you go into the house, each room has its own general theme. This haunted house was even entertaining for first timers. The environment was very scary, so I enjoyed that. This has been Ashley Kelvis, John Church, and Katie Vega for WMCM. Be sure to get out and experience some of these Halloween attractions tonight or be on the lookout next October for more of these Halloween fun. Bring your food, bring your thoughts, because tomorrow Campus Climate is hosting the Brown Bag Lunch Film Series. You can join this conversation on the first Friday of every month. This semester, the event will be held in the Hall of Nations in Centennial Hall. The conversation will discuss contemporary social justice, diversity, and climate issues. The event is presented by friends and colleagues of Campus Climate and are free and open to the public. The event starts tomorrow morning at 11. Visit the school's website for more information about this event. Each week, the WMCM crew goes out and talks to your fellow peers in a segment we call Campus Insight. This week, we send out a crew and ask students about their best Halloween costumes. We're here with WMCM for their Halloween edition of Campus Insight. We're out on campus asking students what their best Halloween costumes have been over the years. Let's walk around and see what the students are saying. Best Halloween costume was a human foosball table. Last year my friend and I were snowmen and we wore white tutus and a white tank top and had a little top hat on with red scarves. My favorite Halloween costume would probably be a Power Ranger. Best Halloween costume was Elizabeth Swan from Pirates of the Caribbean. My favorite Halloween costume was this year. I was Russell from Up, and my roommate was the old guy. I once was Kat Von D, the LA Inc. tattoo artist. Tattoos everywhere. My best Halloween costume was a Elmer's glue bottle. I was Piglet once. <laughs> One year I was an ice cube. My best costume was Risky Business. Best Halloween costume has been Rihanna. My favorite Halloween costume would definitely have to be Bane. My favorite Halloween costume was probably when I was uh, Snoopy in preschool. My best Halloween costume, I'd have to say, is I was an alligator one year, which was pretty cool. I had a head like that. Best Halloween costume was Darth Vader. This has been Grayson and Olivia with WMCM. Have a happy Halloween. Look for the WMCM crew around campus for a chance to have your opinions heard on next week's Campus Insight. And now here's Zach Wilhelmy with the, a review of the movie Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus is a 1993 Halloween-themed fantasy comedy film that was released by Disney and directed by Kenny Ortega. This film tells the story of a Halloween hater teenager named Max who inadvertently re re resurrects three witches, the Sanderson sisters, from their temporary death and must risk his life to protect his sister and defeat them with the helps of a classmate crush a friendly zombie, and an immortal black cat. But before I give it all away, here's the trailer to Hocus. Jump back to a 
Twist the bones and bend the back. Need you to come into American Back in 1693, the people of Salem, Massachusetts... Witches! Yes? ...thought they got rid of the Sanderson sisters for good. Uh, we shall be back! <laughs> 300 years later, oh. it's Halloween Eve, and they're back. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We are home! Are you boys a little old to be trick-or-treating? <laughs> talking about three ancient hags versus the 20th century. How bad can it be? <laughs> now they're digging up old friends. We got him on a stitch. And running amok. Amok, 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 amok. Looking for the one thing they miss most. Who stay for supper? I'm not hungry. Oh. But we are. <laughs> Only one boy has the power to stop them. Prepare to die again. You have no power to hear you. <laughs> Before all Salem falls under their spell. Hey, what hell are you? Yeah. What the hell? What the hell are you? Disney Pictures presents Bette Midler. Uh, hello. Sarah Jessica Parker. Would thou dance with me? And Kathy Najimi. Hocus Pocus. Into the night! They love to fly. And it shows. Good night. Sleep tight. No screaming. <laughs> Boy, wasn't that some great Halloween fun. That was always a staple of mine going into the Halloween season. I actually modeled my costume off of Thackeray Binks. So I highly recommend for you to, to uh, check out that movie. You can see it on the Disney. It actually, a little fun fact about it. It was supposed to be only a Disney movie, but they pushed it to the theaters and uh, had a cult following after that. So that's my movie review, but stay tuned to WMCM's Nick Dollar Store Batman Ragnar. We'll be back with this weekend's weather. At the University of Wisconsin La Crosse, surround yourself with potential. Surround yourself with lifelong friends. Step on campus and be welcomed with a friendly smile. It's just like home. Surround yourself with nature's beauty. Nestled in western Wisconsin's driftless area. It's perfect for learning. Hike the blocks, bike the marsh, soar. Surround yourself with challenging academics. Our motto is Men's Corpus Gay, Latin for mind and body. Experience a whole education. Conduct research. Surround yourself with distinction. Surround yourself with UW Lacrosse. Hello and welcome back to WMCM's Week in Review. I'm Batman. So today we gotta hurry up with this weather thing because I have to go catch the Joker because he's robbing a bank. So tonight we're looking at a low near 39 with rain possible. Make sure you get those umbrellas out. For tomorrow, we're looking at some more rain. Highs nearing 52. Tomorrow night, we're looking at lows nearing 36 and cloudy skies. On Saturday, we're looking at highs nearing 47. For Saturday night, we're looking at lows nearing 29. For Sunday, the last day of our forecast, we're looking at highs nearing 50. And then for Sunday night, we are looking at, as it comes up, lows nearing 37 and a very, very dark, dark night. And now here is Casey Rohan with this week's interview. Casey, take it away. Thank you, Batman. All right, well, I'm here with Lydia Hayes today. She is a very active member in the communication club here at UWL. And thanks so much for being here. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Good. I'm just really happy that you're here. Just want to right away just say thanks and we really appreciate hearing from you. Um, the first question I'm going to ask you here is just can you tell me a little bit about what Communication Club is? Well, um, it's actually Communication Studies Club. So it's a club here on campus for anyone who is a Communication Studies major, Communication Studies minor, or just interested in Communication Studies at all. Um, they can come to our club and meet other people who are interested in the same things as them, learn a little bit more about what our major has to offer, what we do in our major, and just how to communicate overall. Okay. So you said the members are pretty much um, communication majors here on campus. Yes. Um, how many members do you currently have involved? We have about 50 members right now, um, and they're not, 
They're communication studies majors, minors, and just people too who are just interested in it. Oh really? Do you have yes. a lot of people that aren't in the major? We do have a lot of people who are exploring the major, so they just want to learn a little bit more about it. Um, they might think that they want to do it, they're just not sure what emphasis they want to take, or um, maybe just as a minor, so we can give them a little bit more information about okay, that. Okay, wonderful. And then how often do you meet and what do your meetings all entail when you guys do get together? We meet every other Tuesday at 7 o'clock in Centennial 2301. So we keep our meetings pretty short because uh, we want to be respectful of your time, but we also want to provide good quality meetings. So um, we do what our members want. We ask them what they're interested in. So um, this next Tuesday we are having the um, public speaking group that um, helps people in the library. They're coming in um, to talk to talk and do like a little workshop and then the next two weeks after that Joe Gao is actually coming in. Oh cool. So that's an exciting yeah, event for that us. Is. <laughs> okay and then um, personally for you how long have you been involved in Com Club here? Um, I'm currently a junior and I didn't declare a major until the end of my freshman year so I was in Com Club all of last year and then decided that I liked it a lot and I wanted to be more involved so then I became the president of Com Club this year so overall a year and a half. Okay all right and you said you're the president now of Com yes. Club so what does that all entail for um, your position what are your responsibilities what kind of things do you do? Um, we actually have four officers so I'm the president we also have a vice president a public relations coordinator and a membership coordinator so I kind of um, work with all three of them and we plan what we want to talk about at every single meeting um, we talk to our members, um, set up volunteer opportunities for them, and then also our advisors are um, Jennifer Butler Modaf and Dan Modaf, and so I communicate between them and our officers and the club. Okay. Do your advisors have a, a huge part in this club, or is it more student-based? You guys kind of run everything here. It's a little bit more student-led. They kind of let us take the lead, um, do what we want, because we are the students. We know the members a little and what they want. Um, we talk to them, they're in our classes. Okay, and then um, do you have any promotional events or fundraising events you put on throughout the semester here that people would be interested in learning about? We just want to get people to um, learn a little bit more about Com Club. So we put on events um, in the beginning of the year. We have an event where people can meet the pr new professors and just chat with the professors, network a little bit. And then um, in during second semester, we also have a meeting where you can network with um, past communication studies majors so people who have graduated maybe gone on to work somewhere else. Okay sounds like a lot of fun stuff going on. I'm just gonna ask you one more question here. I'd like to know how does someone get involved in Com Club? What are the requirements and how can someone get more information if they're interested in joining? If you're interested in joining um, you can just show up to one of our meetings. Um, all you have to do is pay your dues, um, come to two meetings a semester and then just email us or find us on Facebook for more information. All right, well, I wanna thank you so much for being here today. We definitely appreciate it. And we're gonna head over to sports soon with Seth, but first we're gonna take a look at those adorable, perfect pets. Meet Jasper, the friendly dog. He's a two-year-old pit bull that is very silly and is great with kids. Here's Lancelot. He's an energetic three-month-old kitty who's on a quest for a new family. Meet Cletus. He's a one-year-old Dachshund mix, proving that though he's pint-sized, he provides gallons of fun. And meet Molly. She's an eight-week-old kitty that likes to keep it silly and is full of love. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Again, the phone number for the Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014. The Eagles football team looked to climb their way into the win column for the second straight week, hosting conference rival Stevens Point this past Saturday. Things started off a bit dicey for the Eagles when the pointers blocked Matt Van Druten's opening drive punt and returned it for a touchdown. The rest of the first half belonged to the Eagles, though, as they capitalized on the defense's opportunistic takeaways and scored 28 unanswered points to take a 28-7 lead into the break. The Eagles' offense sputtered in the second half, managing only a single first down conversion. 
and the pointers mounted a hard-fought comeback. Driving late and down by just seven, Stevens Point worked their way deep into the Eagles' territory on fourth down with just seconds to play. The Eagles' defense came up big and made a game-ending stop on the two-yard line as time expired to preserve the 28-21 win. Sophomore quarterback Trent Cummings threw three touchdowns and is now 2-0 as the Eagles' starter after replacing senior quarterback Andy Sires. After the game, he was quick to credit the play of his teammates and the defense's five takeaways for making his job a lot easier. The Eagles will look to improve to 3-5 and five this Saturday when they host winless UW River Falls at 1 p.m. The women's tennis team was back in action at the WIAC tournament this, in Madison this past weekend. The Eagles had a strong showing, capturing one singles and two doubles championships on their way to second place overall. Eagles senior Abby Tresseter had herself an impressive day. The third seeded Tresseter won her first WIAC title, knocking off both second and fourth seeds on her way to the number two singles championship. That wasn't all for Tresseter, as she and senior Olivia Hartwick wrote a 3-0 record all the way to the number one doubles title. Sophomores Kimmy Morozik and Brianne Blanton entered the number two doubles tournament, seeded number one, and after a bye, defeated both the fourth and second seed teams to take home the number two titles by finishing uh, second in both the regular season standings and at the championships. The Eagles will be one of four teams to advance to the team tournament in the spring to determine the conference's automatic qualifier for the NCAA Division III championship. The women's volleyball team was looking to bounce back on Saturday against UW River Falls after a tough loss on Friday to UW Stout. The Eagles came out firing for a dominant 3-0 victory as Crystal Zeigler and Lauren Probst led the team with 10 kills each. Zeigler was dialed in, hitting 400 for the match, and committed only two errors in 20 attempts. Freshman Jill Entinger made a major contribution as well with nine kills, hitting an impressive 467. With the win, the Eagles improved to 13-2 overall and 3-5 and in the conference, and returned to action this Saturday at Stevens, the Stevens Point Quadrangular. That's all this week in sports. Back to you guys. Pretty incredible stuff happening there for the Eagles, tearing awesome. it up. Yeah, Seems first two like wins of the season. Are you okay, man? Like your mustache kept falling off. Is it all right? I have a condition I don't like to talk about on air. Oh. Does the condition involve growing hair? <laughs> that's pretty impressive. So. Yeah. Garth, I got to ask, where's Wayne? I don't know. I think he wanted to be James Bond instead. I don't know. And who wouldn't want to be James Bond? I know that when I'm James Bond, I can... Has anyone with... seen the Joker? I'm looking for the Joker. Oh, God, oh. Batman's here. Have you seen the Joker? You're the Joker. Wow, that was harrowing. Well, that's all for watching WMCM. But as I like to say in the James Bond world, nothing's ever too over until the mission is complete, and the mission is never complete. Oh. Not yet. Not today. As we continue on after all of this, I will continue to fight crime for the Bureau of Investigations over in Britain. You're not MI, bad, as they call it. But otherwise, I have a lot of things to continue on with. Garth, what are your plans for Halloween? Um, we're supposed to keep talking. I don't know. We, 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 I, just, I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to hurl. What are you going to do? If you start hurling, I'll start hurling. If you guys start hurling, I guys start hurling. What are you going to do with the weekend? Uh, I'm going to be partying up Halloween style. A lot of kids trick-or-treating. All right, thanks for watching WMCM's Week in Review. Catch us next week at, at the following times of 2.45 and 4.30, and next Thursday at 4.35 right here on Campus Channel 6, Charter Channel 96, and Digital Cable Channel 989.